quiet streets of Florida's suburban neighborhoods, a chilling plot was brewing beneath the surface, threatening to unleash unimaginable terror upon the community. It all began with a routine traffic stop on a seemingly unassuming day in September, when a Jupiter police officer pulled over a young man named Henry Joseph Horton IV for a broken headlight. What appeared to be a minor infraction quickly escalated into a shocking revelation that sent shockwaves through law enforcement and the public alike. During the search of Horton's truck, officers made a startling discovery, handwritten pages detailing his meticulously planned mass murder spree. The pages outlined his sinister intentions to acquire firearms and unleash violence upon his former high school, Okeechobee High School, intending to kill everyone with his arsenal of guns. As the investigation deepened, more disturbing details emerged, painting a picture of a deeply troubled individual with a chilling agenda. Horton's plans extended beyond the walls of his alma mater, with intentions to carry out a stabbing spree at El Rey Jesus Church in Miami and targeting other locations, including a Walmart, various churches, his own family members, and even the United Nations building in New York. His phone contained notes on how to construct bombs and gather like-minded individuals to carry out similar acts of violence across the country, amounting to a potential massacre of unimaginable proportions. As law enforcement delved into the depths of Horton's twisted intentions, the true extent of the darkness lurking within him began to unfold. Motivated by a disdain for religion and fueled by a disturbing fascination with violence, Horton's plans represented a chilling threat to the safety and security of the community. In this documentary, we embark on a journey into the heart of darkness, exploring the mind of Henry Horton and the events that led to his arrest. Through exclusive interviews with law enforcement officials, psychological experts, and members of the community, we seek to unravel the complexities of this harrowing case and shed light on the disturbing realities of modern-day extremism. Join us as we delve into the case of Henry Horton, uncovering the darkness that lurked beneath the surface and the tireless efforts of law enforcement to prevent a tragedy of unimaginable proportions. I'll follow that back. Final is going to be 706 and Turnpike, just west of Turnpike. Down for trial and trace it. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Officer Salas, Office with Jupiter Police Department. So the reason I stopped you is you actually have a headlight. I don't know if you're aware about that or not. Let me see. I'll show you afterwards. But do you have your license registration insurance on you? Um, I got it. Uh, I got the uh, insurance via an app. Okay, that's fine. Or, not an app, but a screenshot. Yeah, that's fine. As long as you have a copy or a proof of it, and then your registration as well. Yeah. Once I'm done over here, I'll show. I'll be more than happy to show you. Alright, here's the insurance from my. Yep, that's fine. Perfect. I just need to see that the vehicle's insured. That's my license. Okay, and then you have the registration on you? I don't think I have it at the moment. Okay, it's not in the glove box? No. No, okay. Do you have any weapons in the vehicle I should be worried about? No, sir. No, no drugs, nothing illegal I should be worried about? No, sir. If I had to pull my narcotics can, I'd not got to alert to the vehicle? No. No? Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Yeah, I believe it's going to be your passenger light, so whenever I'm done here with the traffic stop, I'll let you get out and I'll show it to you, alright? Okay. Yep. Just sit tight for me. I'm sorry? What do you do? I said just sit tight for me. I got to run your license. Oh, okay. Yep. Have you ever been stopped before? Um, yes, I have been stopped other times. Okay, what were they for? One time I ran a red light. Okay. And I got a warning from the sheriff's office. Okay. What was the other time for? Uh, the other time was for speeding. Okay. Because right, yeah, I'm not a big ticket person, so as long as you come back clear, you're not like a crazy wanted axe murderer or anything like that, then we'll be good to go, okay? I got no warrants. Uh, I didn't say warrants, I just said if you're like wanted for anything like that, so. No, I'm not wanted for nothing. All right, no worries. Just sit tight for me, okay? How long have you been working? How long have you been working with them? With who? With the police department. Police department. I've been working for about two years now. Oh, so you've been there for a while? Yeah. Man, I want to join one day. Yeah, definitely. It's a great, it's a great agency. I love it. I just transferred from down south, though. So I worked yeah. with Miami PD for about four years, and I transferred up here. Man, it must have been crazy. 
Oh yeah, you deal with a lot of crazy stuff. So just sit tight for me. Right? Let me run your license real quick. All right. As the routine traffic stop continues, officers unaware of the danger lurking within. Their senses heightened, they prepare to run the driver's identification, expecting nothing more than a routine citation for a broken headlight. But little do they know, they are about to encounter a darkness that will shake them to their core. With each passing moment, the anticipation builds, the silence punctuated only by the sound of fingers tapping against the keyboard. As the identity of the driver is revealed, a chilling realization sets in. What started as a routine traffic stop has now become a harrowing encounter with a potential threat to the community. With hearts racing and adrenaline pumping, the officers brace themselves for what lies ahead. <laughs> All right, Mr. Henry, you want me to come out and I'll show you real quick what you're talking about? Yeah, here. Cool. Just make sure your high beams aren't on there. So if you come out over here. See how that's completely out? Jesus. Yeah. So it's a quick fix at O'Reilly's. What, like maybe 50 60 bucks, especially for a truck? Quick fix. I've, I've heard you can use like a wrench thing to pull out the, to pull it out and then have reinstall the new light. Yeah. It's easy. O'Reilly's does it. Yeah. So I'd rather you buy one there, they'll install yeah. it for you. I'd rather have you do it at O'Reilly's, pay sixty bucks to get it fixed instead of giving you like a hundred and six dollar citation. Oh, and then crap. another thing. You gotta have your registration on you from the vehicle, right? You gotta have it. Yeah, you gotta have it. You can have a picture of the insurance. Yeah. You just gotta have a copy of the registration of the vehicle because obviously I got I can go back to my system, do a little bit of research and I'll find it hard registered to your mom. Yeah. But if let's say my system's on, you can't prove to me that that car belongs to you, right? Yeah, you so. can't. I couldn't prove it that yeah. So other than that, like I like, said, it's just that. Like I was saying, uh, there was an engine marijuana in the car like, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. There's none in there now. Yeah. Be careful to search to make sure of that. Uh, sure. Yeah, you can. It's a yes or no. It's, it's, uh, it's not meant to like intimidate you or anything like that. Yes, we can search another thing. Yeah, you can search. We can? We can? Yeah. Okay, can you come hang out with me back here? Yeah. I'd rather you buy one there, they'll install yeah. it for you. Normally. I'd rather have you do it at O'Reilly's, pay 60 bucks to get a fix instead of giving you like $106 a day. And then yeah. another thing, you gotta have your insurance on you from the bank, right? You gotta have it. Yeah, you gotta have it. You can have a picture of their insurance, yeah. you just gotta have a copy of the registration of the vehicle. Because obviously, I, got, I can go back to my system, do a little research, and I'll find it hard to register to your mom. Yeah. But if, let's say, my system's done, you can't prove to me that it's hard as long as you right? Yeah, you can't. I couldn't oh. prove without the insurance. So, other than that, I guess like, I just have like I was saying, um, you said there was marijuana in the car, what, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. There's none in there now? No. you care if we search to make sure of that? Uh, sure. Yeah, you can? It's a yes or no. It's, it's, it's not meant to, like, intimidate you or nothing like that. Yes, we can search or no, we can. Yeah, you can search. We can? We can? Yeah. Okay, can you come hang out with me back here? As we saw in the last body cam clip at this moment, the officers separate, with one taking Henry over for further questioning while the other searches the vehicle. We will stay with the officer questioning Henry with the search of the vehicle upcoming. We're gonna hang out by his car just so we don't get hit. Yeah. And in the sh shadow area. Shower. Right here. Right here. Just so I don't get blinded by these red and blue lights that I see enough of. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw your tire hanging down like that. I don't know if there was a, uh, if you had like a flat recently or anything like that. Well, I tried to I tried to replace it with the flat, uh -huh. but I had to buy a new tire from Walmart. Gotcha. So that's the original spare tire or something then. Right. Gotcha. So how long have you been working with the police department? Three years. Three years. Yep. What's the heaviest thing you have on? You? What's the heaviest thing out of all this stuff? Physically, uh, probably the belt. Because you've had lower back problems. Jesus. If I'm not wearing the belt and I bend over wrong, I get a sharp stabbing pain in the small of my back. Sounds like fibromyalgia. It's not fun. I don't know what it is, but it's not fun. Yeah, yeah I'm one of our um, traffic traffic officers, and I do drug investigations. And, uh, I've uh, 
FLA. What does that stand for? Oh, that. So before the, I think it was the '90s, the abbreviations for each state used to be three, yeah. three letters. So now we're just FL for Florida. It used to be FLA, and we've never changed it. Some other agencies have never changed it. Right. That's just the abbreviation for Florida that they used to use. Correct. So how long would you say it takes them to arrive at the canine? Hmm. How long would you say it takes to arrive at the canine? No, we don't. We don't need a canine. You give us consent to search. Oh. No, there's one in the back of my car. I'll, uh, I won't say any. I'm not going to say anything. You want? No. Well, you can, if you want to talk, you can talk. Yeah, but I don't want it to all be used against me, man. Well, you're not in trouble for anything. Is there I something he's going to find that you're in trouble for? Yeah. What? Most likely a bong. A bong? Is yeah. that it? Yeah. Okay. Um, hang on right here. I'm just going to tell him. Just so I'm going to tell him that you told me, okay? okay? Is there anything else in the car? Now's your chance to be honest. No, sir. Can you take a seat for me? Yes. Hey, Kev. He, now you are, yes. Take a seat. He said you're going to find a bomb. A bomb? Yeah. Okay, uh, bomb. Wait up for a second. Okay. Um, can you come help me yeah. with that? Make your clothes on. Um, just kind of. This should be us for a second. Just wipe your clothes on. Alright, uh, Henry, you said? Yes, sir. Are you saying I'm gonna find a bomb in there? Yes. Alright, did you use fishing needs? It's been used. It's been used? Okay. When was the last time you used it? Yes, sir. Okay, where is it gonna be in the vehicle? Hey, uh, mute. Where is it gonna be in the vehicle? The, uh, the center console. You said Henry is your name? Yes, sir. Are you standing for me? We're just gonna check your pockets real quick, make sure you got nothing sharp, nothing like that. That's just our policy, just to keep your hands behind your back while we're doing this, okay? You need to, yeah. No, you're, no just you're, being not. you're just being attained. You're not. You're not. This doesn't mean you're going to jail. Doesn't mean you're going anywhere right now. No, you're fine. Listen, you're just being detained right now. Okay. 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 You have anything that's gonna hurt me in your pockets? Stick no. me, poke me, stab me, no. hurt me in any way, shape, or form? Nothing. Nothing's gonna hurt my partner. All right. Okay. So you said a bong in the where was it again? The center console? Yes, sir. Okay. In there? Yeah, your license is right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, cool. You're going to put my car, just bring me sit down here. Just have him sit down. Alright. Just hang out with him, please. Okay, alright, now it's hard. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I'm going to just search real quick. Alright, car. Actually, yeah, I'll do it right now. Alright. Alright, you can take a seat here. I'm going to help you down, okay? Alright. Just so it's down how long are you. Take a seat. Take a seat in the cup, in the car? No, no, right here on the oh, car. Oh, right. okay. Alright, Henry, so. Can you scratch down for me? He's got you. He won't let you pull. Yeah, I got you. You can sit on the curb so you're not kneeling on the grass. Okay. And we'll help you back up, okay? All right, Henry. So, like I said, you're not under arrest or anything like that. I'm just reading you these because I read it to everyone that goes into handcuffs, uh, whether they're being detained, okay? So you have the right to remain silent, and, and you do not have to talk to me if you do not wish to do so. You do not have to answer any of my questions should, should you have, uh, should I have any. Should you talk to me, anything you might say may be introduced to evidence in court against you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right. If you want a lawyer present during questioning at this time or any time you're after that, you're on time to have a lawyer present. If you can't afford to pay for a lawyer, won't be granted, or won't be provided to you, and no cost if you want. Do you understand these rights? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Just sit tight here. Right? Right. Are you originally from Okeechobee? Um, like you mean within the past few years? Well, like born and raised. Uh, no, I was born in Virginia. Virginia? What brought your family here? My, my mom wanted to be closer to her family. Yeah. Because a lot of her extended family lives down here, like my aunt and stuff. So do you work in Okeechobee? Yes, I work at Domino's Pizza uh, for Domino's. Thanks. Were you going to take the turnpike or I-95? Yeah, I was going to go to I-95. I-95. Man, these, man, these glasses keep falling out of my face. Falling off? Yeah, can you please agree with this? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. traffic stops? Um, I conduct probably about five traffic stops every every 30 minutes. Good lord. That's quite a lot. Yeah. I, I haven't, I've never been to Jupiter before. It's like a small town or something. Jupiter's no. We're, we're a pretty big sized town. We we go out to the gas station you passed, the 7-Eleven out there. Oh yeah, that one. Um, that's our jurisdiction. Then all the way to the beach, all the way down to Donald Ross, and then all the way to pretty much to Cuesta Line, which is a very small, Cuesta's a small town. Wait a minute. 
Why does it feel like I have double handcuffs? You have two pairs on, just so you get more room. It's so it's not uncomfortable or. Oh, uh, like, like it's like a stress position. What do you mean? Like, like where your body is so under so much stress after a while it breaks. Like being on blind foot. Well, no. If we stuff. put two on, if we put one on, your arms would be closer. We put two on so they're further apart. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want you to like have any shoulder issues or anything like that. Yeah, because these could cause plenty of shoulder issues already. Has if you ever had any like history of mental health or anything like that? Yes. What's that? Uh, when I was in Virginia, I was put. I was. I voluntarily went into a um, mental hospital or uh, what a was that? Center. What was that for? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I threatened to do a, do very violent things, uh -huh. and uh, I got the they got uh, a bunch of people investigating me and my family. What'd you threaten to do? I threatened to I threatened to do a very I threatened to how do I say this? Uh, like a school shooting type thing? Yes. Yeah. You have those thoughts anymore? Every now and then, yes. Are, are you having those thoughts now? Yes. Yeah. Um. You have any firearms in the car? No, sir. No. Um, okay. I have a I have a box of a BB gun. Okay. From Walmart. But, that's yeah, but you're having the thoughts of like you would want to commit a school shooting right now? Uh, no. No. Or, yes. Yeah. Um, is there any place that like if if you were to do something like that, would you do it in Okeechobee or would you go somewhere else to do it? Um, probably somewhere else. Okay. Is that what you're going to Miami for? No, not today. Not today? Do you have like a date in mind or anything like that? My 22nd birthday. Your 22nd birthday? January 2nd, 2026. Okay. Um, and do you have firearms at home and stuff? No, sir. Where would you get them from? I don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. Um, hey, Kev. Yeah. Unlock your car, please, and then we're going to put them in. C come here. Being or anything? Um, let's put them in your car so we can we can have a talk about what oh, I just yeah. got. Um, yeah. 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 Nothing. Oh. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. 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 The police used the stench of cannabis to ask permission to search the vehicle. Horton, undoubtedly unaware of any other belongings of his arousing suspicions, allows the search of the vehicle. What police find inside is disturbing to say the least. The audio from much of the search has been redacted. tell the officer is seasoned in searches of vehicles and seems to pay special attention to the handwritten notes found among the mess of what was Henry Horton the fourth's vehicle. As the officer picks up the yellow notepad with writing on it, an air of pause seems to stare the viewer in the face as the writing on that pad has no doubt sent an immediate chill down the spine of the officer on scene.
further search of the vehicle yields two knives, which plays a critical role in the arrest as a stabbing spree, was allegedly detailed in the notes found. Center uh, console. Center Henry's room? Yes. Can you stand up for me? We're just going to check the box real quick, make sure you got nothing sharp over there. That's just our policy, just to keep your hands behind your back while we're doing this, okay? okay. You need to, yeah. No, you're being no, you're detained. You're just being detained. You're not, you're not, this doesn't mean you're going to jail, doesn't mean you're going anywhere right now. No, you're fine. Listen, you're Appreciate just being detained right now. I think that's all in my, in my pockets is my license. Okay. Do you have anything that's going to hurt me in your pockets? Stick no. me, poke me, stab me, hurt me in any way, shape, or form? Not going to hurt my partner? No, all right. Okay, so you said a bong in the, where was it again, the center console? Yes, sir. Okay. Is my license in there? Yeah, your license is okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright. Just hang out with them, please. Okay, we're gonna ask how we're gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna just start with them. Actually, yeah, I'll do it on this. Alright, alright, you can take a seat here. I'm gonna help you then, okay? Okay. So, uh, take a seat. Take a seat. No, right here, right here on the curb where you were. Yeah. Okay. Alright, Henry, so just take a seat. He's got you, he won't let you fall. Yeah, I got you. You can sit on the curb so you're not kneeling on the grass. Okay. Yeah. And we'll help you back up, okay? Alright, All right, Henry. So, like I said, you're not under arrest or anything like that. I'm just reading you these because I read it to everyone that goes into handcuffs, uh, whether they're being detained, okay? So, uh, you have the right to remain silent, and, and you do not have to talk to me if you do not wish to do so. You do not have to answer any of my questions should you have, should I have any. Should you talk to me anything you might say may be introduced into evidence in court against you? Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right. If you want a lawyer present during questioning at this time or any time here after that, you're entitled to have a lawyer present. If you cannot afford to pay for a lawyer, one will be granted, but one will be provided to you at no cost if you want one. Do you understand these rights? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Just sit down here, all right? Here the police officer is closely examining the written notes Horton has written, threatening to take lives and cause mass destruction, not only on his own community, but that of greater America. At this point, it must be setting in that the officer has a real threat on his hands, and he is contemplating his options and what to do about it in order to keep the community safe. 